guys hear me? There we go. Good morning. So glad to be back and so glad to see every one of you here. We are going to study the word in just a minute. And this word has been transforming lives from generations after generations. And as it changes your life, it could change the next generation. And, you know, when we see there's hope in Jesus, he's the one I was talking to someone yesterday. That there was a guy that came over to do cabinets on my house. And, and when I talked to him, he I just met him that day. And he's a business owner and he's really successful what he does. And he was just talking, I talked about family. And then he mentioned that his mother-in-law, she was, she was addicted to drugs and she gave up his wife when she was younger as a little, little girl up for adoption because the drug addiction took over. And he said she went to prison for a lot of years and he, of course she lost contact with her daughter. Uh, when, by the time the, the mom got out of prison, her daughter was married, had children. And they contacted her, and mom contacted her and said, I want to have, have a relationship with you. And, and as a result, they met each other. But mom fell back into drugs. And mom today, you know, she got her arm amputated, her legs being amputated. And, and he was talking to me, and it seems like there's no hope for her. How, could, how, how is she ever going to change? And, and I told him the only answer... The only way to set someone free from a deep addiction, deep hurt, heal a broken heart, or maybe you're dealing with major depression, you need a miracle. And there, there's, the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, Jesus, come on, Jesus responds. If someone was saying, I, I, need, a, I need a breakthrough, and Jesus can set her free, and Jesus could heal her, that's the answer. We're not offering you religion. We're offering you the creator of the universe. We're offering you the creator of the universe. Nothing was created apart from him. He's your answer. And today, no matter how desperate, and you might say, man, I'm at the end of my rope. No big deal. That's where God, special, God specializes. Come on, in lives and situations that are hopeless. If you came in here depressed, you failed, you've messed up, you qualify for Jesus Christ. He wants to help you. Jesus did not come for perfect people to have their act together. I choose you. You're awesome. He, he, said, he didn't say, I choose you because you're so smart. I choose you because you're so successful. He goes, no, but the Bible says that he came for sinners. He came for people that failed that have shortcomings, that acknowledge their shortcomings. And he said, I came to you to save you, to set you free, to give you a new start, a new beginning. They might have counted you out, but God, Jesus has not counted you out. It's time for you to call on that name and get a breakthrough for you. Let's give the Lord one more big hand. He's worthy of all praise and honor. We want to say hi to all our campuses, you know, you know, Pomona campus right now, they're worshiping. We got our Arrowhead campus. We got a campus in Kenya, in TJ, in Oregon, and now Arizona. You know, we got Pastor Robert out there. Pastor John and Fran are here from Arizona, the pastors for the Arizona church. We are so glad that you're here. We're partnering up and we're reaching Arizona for Jesus. And, and I, we got a team right now in Compton that's out there right now. And, and we're spreading out our wings to reach more people that are hurting and bring them hope. That's what this is all about. Uh, um, next week, we got Daryl Strawberry coming out. Uh, I just want you to know, we're bringing him out for bait. Okay, what does that mean? People know Daryl Strawberry. People love baseball. People love the Dodgers. Here we got an L.A. Dodger fan right here with his hat. He's ready to go. There's no reason that this week you shouldn't find someone with a Dodger hat and say, bro, Daryl Strawberry's going to be in our church. We're going to have food, a car show. It's going to be awesome next week. Ask, uh, you, Dodger fans should be here. Baseball fans should be here. Now, I want you, every one of you to write down five names and be intentional about this. And let's bring somebody next week. Don't come without a Dodger fan. 
or baseball fan or a Daryl Strawberry fan. But he's going to be here, and it's going to be Daryl Strawberry's first time in San Bernardino. He's going to be here. Come on, let's make, let's, let, let's do this. How about Daryl Strawberry coming here and being blessed because you showed up, come on, with somebody and watch God use him in the greatest way that God has ever used Daryl Strawberry right here. How many believe that God can happen and we can make that happen as we go to work? Are you ready to go to work this week? You know, I, I thank you guys and we're an army and we're a team. And you know what that means is that there, there's a part I could do and there's a part that we do together. And we can't get this done without everyone participating. Let's do our best. Let's understand we're part of a church that's filling heaven. And let's do our part here on earth to fill heaven. Are we going to do that? All right. We're going to pray right now. We're going to get into the word. And we're going to read from Luke chapter 18 to verse 1 through 8 today. And we're going to cover a story. Uh, and it's going to exemplify a major point that God wants to make. And he's going to be talking or Jesus wants to make. He's going to be talking about the power of prayer. And he's also going to be talking about faith that produces results. Faith that produces results. How many want to get some results in your life? Faith that produces results. I'm going to show you how to do that through a teaching of Jesus Christ. Father, we just thank you. There's some results that we're fighting for right now. That right now it doesn't look like, if we look at the physical, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But you're a God of breakthroughs. You're a God that raises the dead still. You're a God that heals the most incurable diseases. And you're a God that saves the most wicked sinners. So we just thank you that nothing's impossible for you. Because let's go ahead and acknowledge that you did create the whole world. By just speaking. Let there be light and their son was there. And we thank you Lord that that same God... It's the same. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's the God that we serve. A God that's not dead, but he's alive. And that means he can help us with our real problems because you are a real God. We worship you today and we're asking you to reveal yourself. Help us to understand the Bible as we read it today and apply it to our lives so we can start getting the results of your word in our lives. We are here with a purpose. It's not time to complain. It's time to be effective. We are in the last days and people are in a dark place. They're more depressed than ever. They're more suicidal than ever. They're more heartbroken than ever. They're more hopeless than ever. But we just thank you, Lord. That just means light will work in a real dark world. May we come and bring light and hope and encouragement and love to the darkest places on earth. And I just thank you, Lord. That's why we're here. And because you're in us, we are a powerful team. We are a powerful church. And your power lives in us. And we're ready for Father, to see the greatest moves of God in our lives, in our families. I thank you. There are those that haven't, re haven't received you as their Lord and Savior in our families yet, but they're coming really soon. There's some impossible situations that right now as we're praying, you're going to turn them around and you're going to get all the glory. This is not a time to be depressed or discouraged. It's a time to have faith and believe for the greatest move of God. That chapter might have closed, but there's a new chapter beginning today and I thank you in that chapter there's blessings in that chapter there's breakthroughs in that chapter there's new beginnings I thank you Lord it's not over because we're serving a God that's the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end you're going to have the last word and we thank you if you're going to have the last word all things will work together for good we give you all the honor and all the glory and the praise in Jesus name we pray amen let's give God praise Awesome. You may be seated. We're going to learn how to pray more and worry less. Jesus wanted to teach us how to pray in this portion of scripture. And he highlights a certain type of faith in this portion of scripture. And what he highlights is a faith called persistent faith. There's a faith that Jesus is looking for on earth. But this type of faith, as we read this scripture, is hard to find. It's hard to find people on earth that have persistent faith. 
There's a lot of people that have shaky faith, convenient faith, but they don't have persistent faith. And the persistent faith is what God is looking for because there's some miracles and there's some breakthroughs and there are dreams that you're believing for and vision that will not happen in, will not happen instantly. There are some things that you're believing for that you're going to need some persistence and some endurance. Just because you're getting a no now doesn't mean that it's a permanent no. Just because you've been praying for something that doesn't look like there's any movement doesn't mean that it won't move today or tomorrow or the next week. We need some people that have faith that's persistent, not just microwave faith, not fast food faith. I want my hamburger in 10 seconds or else I'm complaining to the manager. And I think that we're doing that with God and some of the things that you're believing for are big miracles. And when you're believing for something big and you have a big vision, there's a lot of preparation before that vision comes to pass. And the major preparation is you. See, you want the results and God wants to change you. There's some things that can't happen instantly because you're not ready for it. If you did get it, you wouldn't be able to take care of it or to steward it yet because you're not equipped to handle the blessing you're believing for. So there's a development process. Some say development process. The bigger the vision, the more the delay. Well, I want to be believed for some big things. The bigger the vision, the longer the preparation. Does anybody in this room want to develop some persistent faith? That you're believing today, but next week you're believing. And the month later you're believing. And a year from now you're believing. Two years from now you're believing. Ten years from now you're believing. Eighteen years from now you're still believing for what you started believing. Because your faith is persistent. So now Jesus is giving us an example. An extreme example of it's her, the Bible doesn't give her a name. It just says widow. And it gives us an extreme example of someone that has persistent faith despite all the obstacles that she's facing. And in this story, she gets her request granted. Let's look at Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Now Jesus was telling the disciples a parable to make the point that at all times they ought to pray and not give up and lose heart. So Jesus is sharing a story. Parable is another name for story. He said, I'm sharing a story and there's a point I want to make. There's some points I want to make. The first point is we ought to pray all the time. You should always, as a believer, have communication with God at all times. There should never be a time that you stop hearing from God, stop worshiping God, and start expecting for God to move in your life. We should communicate with God at all times. What he was saying here is, I want a relationship with you. I want to help you. But I want to make sure that you keep the lines of communication open. And God says we should, Jesus says we should pray. This is the point I'm making. You should pray at all times. Pray means deliberate communication. It means we are talking to God and God is talking to us. It's prayer to God. When you're praying, you're seeking God's guidance, his provision, his support, his intervention. To make, or it means to, also means to make petitions to God. Thanksgiving, worship, meditation on the word, all forms of prayer, all communication with God. What he's saying is communicate with me. I want to talk with you. I want you to talk with me. 
but we're going to have to be deliberate. Someone say deliberate. Do you know right now you're being deliberate because you're coming to church today? This is prayer. What do you mean this prayer? This is communication. God speaking to us. Has someone already received something from God already? God has communicated. But you didn't show up to this place accidentally. By accident. You showed up to this place because you intentionally said, I'm going to meet up with God. The Bible says that my house or the church shall be a house of prayer. That means it's a place where we communicate with God and God communicates with us. We need to put God on our schedule weekly as we come together. And we need to put our, uh, God on our schedule daily in your own personal prayer and devotion time. And you will need to make, give God time and meditation all day long as you're making decisions. God wants to help you with your business. God wants to help you with your business, with your family. God wants to help you with your decisions. But we need to make sure that we're deliberately communicating at all times. We should never stop communicating with God. With God. How many believe that? In 1 Thessalonians 5.16, it says this. Always be joyful. Always be what? What? Always be joyful. Well, it's, it's going to show you how to do that. Never stop praying. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. I believe the joy comes with hope. It doesn't mean you're happy about the pain, the suffering, the trial you're in. But joy has to do more with your faith than it has to do with your circumstance. Many don't have joy because you're focused on your circumstance. Instead of focusing on your answer. How do you focus on your answer? Pray. God already knows what you need and he's able to help you and me. He's the one that gave you that big vision and that great desire. And he wants to help you. He wants to partner. But the only way he can partner up with you and partner up with me is that we give him a time of day and we pray. Talk to God. He's the CEO. He knows how to help you. He's wise. He has all the provision. He has the ideas. He takes a whole bunch of dummies like me and you, and he makes, come on, he does great things with them because he, what, he, what does he do? He uses people that realize they don't have it all together. I need some help. Does anybody need some help in your family, in your business, in your life, with your children? Never stop praying. Never what? Never stop communicating with God. Never. Be thankful in all circumstances. That's prayer too. Be thankful. So I don't know how to pray. Okay, I'll help you right now. Just start making a list of the things you're thankful for. Thank you for what? Thank you for your hair if you have hair. Thank you for your health if you have health. Thank God you're alive if you're alive. Come on, any people alive in here? Any alive believers in here? Come on, let me hear you if you're a live believer in here. Come on, we're not a dead church. We're full of the spirit. Thank God for your transportation. Thank God for your children. Oh, my children. Thank God for them. Thank God that you got food. Thank God you got a J-O-B. Thank God that you got a church to go to. Thank God that there's the word of God. Thank God that God sent Jesus to die for you and set you free and give you eternal life. Thank God that there's prayer, that no matter what you're going through, that you can communicate and connect with the source. Come on. Thank God. Making a list. Thanking God. Start with that. You're going to start being happier and more powerful. You should always pray. Never stop praying. For God... And for this is God's will for you who belong to Jesus Christ. What is God's will? That you be joyful. What is God's will? That you never stop praying. Never stop praying. What, is, what is God's will? That you're thankful. Communicating with God in all circumstances. If you live this way and just practice this little part of prayer, I guarantee you this, you're going to start seeing your emotions turn around, your results turn around, and you're going to start seeing some miracles. This is the, this idea. Those that pray... 
are filled with hope. Those that don't pray are filled with stress, anxiety, and worry. Right? What should we be praying about? Answer everything. What should we be praying about? Everything. You should be communicating with God all day long. What decisions are you supposed to make? I got to, I, as a leader, I have to pray to God all day long. God, what do I do? And there's times I'm so busy doing, I forget to pray. And God says, are you done yet? Because it looks like you're like a slippery transmission going 100 miles per hour, going nowhere. Why don't you get, let, come to me and I'll tell you what to do next. Oh, oh I'm, my bad. When was the last time you deliberately spent some time praying? With, with I'll, I'll even say this, with a deliberate, a deliberate list. These are five things I'm believing for right now. I'm believing for these things. I'm persistent about them. And I won't stop praying until I see it come to pass. Is there anybody like that that's saying, I won't stop praying until I see that thing come to pass. I'm persistent about this thing. Look at Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. God's commanding you not to be anxious and worried. I need to create a prayer list. Where do I start? Start off with the things that are stressing you out. And write down those things. You'll never get a prayer answered that you're not even specific about. If I asked you specifically, what are you praying about? I'd hope you'd have an answer. If you ask me to pray for you and you don't know what you want me to pray for you for, I literally don't want to pray for you. If you're too lazy to come up with your own prayer list, why should I get involved with your lazy prayer list? You don't even do that at McDonald's. In the drive-thru. Oh, what are we going to get? What are we going to get? What are we going to get? Do you ever get frustrated with someone that's in your car that doesn't know what they need to get when it's time to order? Am I the only one? Like, you knew we are coming to McDonald's, right? My family, like, they, they get all worked up. I get worked up because I go, do, do not let me get to the front and you don't know what you want. You stress me out. People behind me, long line. If you want a hamburger, just say it. They don't have, they don't have spaghetti here. They don't have Chinese food here. They don't have sushi here. They got hamburgers, fried chicken nuggets. Which one you want? Right? But could it be that you're more prepared for a fast food line than you are for your own life? And your life is boring and it has no power and no one's going to save and no one's going to set free. And you're not going to another level because you've not defined it in your prayer life yet. And could it be that you're not praying, you're only complaining? Complaining is not praying. Focusing on everything that's bad in your life, and I wish it would change, and I wish that would change, that's not prayer. That's complaining. There's a time that you, you got to start saying, I don't like the way things are, but I'm going to start praying about it. I'm not going to be stressed out about it, worried about it, because I serve a God that's greater than my resistance. I serve a God that's greater than the rebellion and the stubbornness in my family and in my kids. I serve a God that could, come on, that could provide for me beyond my job. He created, come on, he owns everything on earth. And I thank you that if he wants to provide something from heaven and transfer it to me, he can get it. I might not know what I'm doing, but he does. Right? I'm going to have to stay here for a little bit. So what should you pray about it? What should we pray about? Everything. What should we pray about? What should we pray about? Young people or singles. You could pray for your husband or wife. Don't get jealous if someone gets one before you. Because God wants to send one to you. But I, but I really believe you should pray about it. We're involved in relationships that have no prayer coverage. You, you haven't even heard from God. 
He, you just went by cute status, cute. God, and, and this is what God will tell you. Everything that, that's cute doesn't come from me. God wants to guide you in your relationships before you mess them up. It's getting all quiet in here. How many believe that? You know why we're messing up so much? We have no guidance from God. We're only praying after the desperation, after the breakdown, after the mess up, after the, we're ready to go to prison, after we're addicted, after the family's falling apart. And God says, pray there. But how about praying before you get there? How about living a life of prayer that's guided by my wisdom? Before you have a nervous breakdown, before you get depressed, before you get diagnosed with severe anxiety, before you get diagnosed with a phobia, why don't you start praying about that thing? Before it starts taking over your mind, messing up your emotions, and you going crazy and breaking dishes in your house, pray about that thing. Maybe you don't have an emotional problem, you have a lack of prayer problem. Because when you start praying, you get in the spirit. When you start praying, you get into what? Prayer is like putting on clothes. You could go out naked, but you're going to look funny. Or you could put on some clothes. And what I mean by that is without the spirit, you got to put on the mind of Christ. You got to put on the armor of God. You got to get the wisdom of God. And I'll recommend start praying the first thing when you wake up in the morning. Spend some time in the Word. Spend some time with God. I know you're in a rush, so wake up a little earlier and put your spiritual clothes on and your spiritual mind on so you don't go out there naked and look like a fool every day. And then saying you come, belong to the way world outreach. And then they're saying, does that pastor teach you anything? All right. Uh, this is what I'm going to tell you. You can't reach them when you're just like them. The Bible says, can't you see that you're naked? Jesus said that. Can't you see you're naked? No, I don't see it. Looking pretty bad out there. They're naked. They have no hope. They have no wisdom. And you show up naked at the same party. No wisdom, no power. And it's only because of one thing. Men ought to always pray. And they should pray about everything. See, we're doing things in our flesh, in our own opinion, in our own reason. And, and we don't have enough influence of the Holy Spirit because we have no time with him. There's things that you can't overcome until you spend time with God. Prayer will strengthen you supernaturally overcome that temptation. Maybe you don't have a temptation problem. You have a prayer problem. Je Jesus told Peter, watch and pray, watch and pray, be intentional, watch out, be alert and pray so that you don't enter into temptation. Am I talking to somebody today? So what do we pray about? Everything. What do we pray about? Everything. Everything. All right. Look what it says. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation by prayer, by what? Prayer. And petition. Prayer and petition. There's that list. I want you this week, and let's not be hard-headed. Let's be teachable. You know how hard-headed is, is this or carelessness? You're in a sermon like this and you're hearing the information, but you're not applying it. And then you say, I tried church, it didn't work for me. No, you try going to church without listening. And anybody goes to church that doesn't apply anything that's being talked about, it's like going to school and not listening. You're not going to get nothing out of it, even though the information's here, the breakthrough's here, but you got to take it and apply it. And if you don't apply it, there's going to be the problem. If you don't apply it, you're going to keep on getting the same results and you actually think you're doing something because you came to church. We're not here to get information. We're here to get some application. See, we don't learn to get informed. We learn to apply. Come on, we learn to apply. I'm learning so I can apply something new in my life. Now I'm going to tell you to do something and you can not do it or do it, but you ought to do it. You ought to pray. You ought to put God on your schedule. Now, this is what you should do. Write, that, write down five things you're praying for. 
You're stressed out. Find out why you're stressed. Some of us don't even know why we're stressed out. You just know you're stressed, you're edgy, you're angry, you're anxious, you're worried, you're, you're moody, you're Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, you're crazy. You're a Christian. We're confused. You need to get five things you're praying for and pray. Ask God to help you with that. Amen. Come on, anybody going to do that? Then write, out, write, down a, write down a list of the things you're thankful for this week. Just those two things. <laughs> write down five things you're believing for. And let's put five things you're thankful for. Let's start there. Let's get ourselves in a place and an attitude of prayer so we can start seeing petitions. We can start seeing breakthroughs. So we can start seeing God move in our lives. God cannot move in a life that he has no access to. God gains access to your life by permission, not force. And prayer gives God permission to work in your life. I believe God right now, Jesus Christ right now is saying, are you done doing it on your own? You're not that smart. You're not as smart as you think you are. Amen. Come on. You know what prayer does? It keeps you humble. Look, do not be anxious or worried about anything. I command you not to be anxious. But this is how you do it. In everything, in every circumstance, situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make, continue to make your specific requests known to God. I want you to continue to make your specific. You guys seen that? So we want prayer for. Um, just ask God. To bless me? <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. Bless you? I don't know. What do you mean by that? You don't even know what it means. You know why you ask me to, to ask someone to pray for you to bless you? Because you don't want to put any work into your own life. Or um, whatever God shows you, prophet... So you want me now to be your Holy Spirit. So you're going to depend on my, my intuition for your life. I, the only thing I should be doing is confirming what God told you. I shouldn't be coming up with some new ideas you never heard of. There's a personal relationship with the Lord that's developed through prayer. Come on. We're going to develop a church that knows God, that spends time with God, and then you can reproduce because only people that know God and mature in God can actually be reproducers. Amen? Praise the Lord. You guys still with me? You still love me? I'm trying to help. It's going to take some time. It's going to take a climb. It's going to take some, a word that we don't like nowadays, discipline. I thought the Holy Spirit was going to do it. No, the Holy Spirit gives you power to be disciplined. Self-disciplined. Oh, I don't have time for prayer. No, you're undisciplined and you're not a good time manager. Or you want to sleep too much. Oh, Lord. I'm trying to help you. you. See, you're not disciplined if you only do what you want to do when it's convenient. You're disciplined when you do what you're supposed to do when you don't feel like doing it. Come on. You're disciplined when you come to church. When you, Come on. You just had an argument in your car and you have to come all alone because your wife walked out of the car halfway here. And you got to tell, baby, I still got to go to church. How many understand you're disciplined when you're tired and you got two hours sleep and you still find your way in the house of God because you used to find yourself at the clubs with two hours sleep, working 18 hours and show up at the club at 12 o'clock midnight and stand there at 4 o'clock in the morning and you're saying, now I'm going to be disciplined for Jesus. Some of you guys were disciplined for a drug habit. We used to stay up all night trying to get your high and God has said, if you put that much sacrifice for sin, I'm going to make that sacrifice for your life and your future and your 
marriage and ministry. Come on, give God some praise. God wants to do something, but he needs some persistence and consistency in our prayer and faith. Persistent faith praise. Because if you're not praying, you don't have faith. You know why we don't pray? Because we don't have faith in God. We got faith in ourselves. And if you want to keep getting human results, stop praying. If you want to start getting supernatural results, start praying. Jesus is the one that's talking about this widow that's coming out and says, I'm going to teach you how to pray. And I, we're not even going to get to the whole story today. We're going to pick it up. Matter of fact, I'm going to pick it up this, this Wednesday. If you want to get the second half of this, you're going to have to do something you're not used to. Make some, I'm sorry, stretch out maybe. Come on Wednesday night. Drive. If you have to drive two, three hours, get here on Wednesday night and let's get our breakthrough. How many know God wants to give you, unlock your life? It could be the difference between people getting saved in your family, you getting your breakthrough, yes or no, but we're going to have to be deliberate. Someone say deliberate communication. So this Wednesday, this week you might say deliberate. I'm going to deliberately show up. I need some communication with God. I need to hear about how to develop this persistent faith. Let's keep on reading here. Look, don't be worried how we do it. Pray about everything and every circumstance, every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Continue to make your specific request known to God. And look at, look at what scripture says. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding and reasoning. That peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. Wow. What is scripture saying? Instead of worry, anxiety, stress, anger, lust, escapism, you can have some peace. And there's only one way to get that peace. It's through prayer. And if you're too busy to pray, you won't have the peace. And this peace is so powerful, it transcends reasoning, thinking, circumstances. And it'll, start, it'll, it'll stand guard in your heart and in your mind. That peace will protect you from wrong thinking. It'll reassure you, I'm with you. I'm going to help you. We're going to get through this. It's going to work out. You're okay. I'm with you. You gave me time. You gave me an open door so I could go ahead and guide you and help you. And what I'm going to do is give you a down payment of what's coming. I'm going to give you some of my peace. I'm going to reassure you that what you prayed about, I'm with you. I'm going to help you with the thing, and it's going to come to pass. But what I need you to do is develop this habit. Continue to pray. No more anxiety. No more worry. If any time you feel anxious or stressed out, you go pray. You need to find a place where you pray. Me and, me and, my, me and my wife, we have a, a, a closet, and we go in there and we pray. A literal closet. And we pray. And then right now I'm putting up a paper with all the petitions on there. Why? Because I'm going to keep up every morning when I get dressed, I'm going to look at that. There it goes. That's what I'm believing for right there. And then when, when, when one of those petitions actually come to pass, I'm going to check it off. Oh, man, it makes life fun. God actually did that. He did that. And he did that. This is how this church happened. It's just through prayer. And we're going to talk more about these stories. Of next. How many could come Wednesday night? I don't know. I would say. Raise your hand if you're going to make an effort. Make an effort. Show up Wednesday night if you can make it. Because I really want to finish this story with you. And we just begin to introduce the subject. 
But I, I pray that you'll do these few things that God is asking you to do. You ought to pray. And if Jesus was your guest speaker today, which he is in a way, and he just came in, and, he's, and you're at the edge of your seat, what do you tell us, Jesus? Speak, Jesus. And he says, you ought to pray and not give up and not be discouraged and not be depressed and not be worried. I suggest that you pray. And if you pray, I'll help you. So what, what else? Just ought to pray. Just meet me every day. Never stop praying. Never stop worshiping on Sundays, coming to church on Wednesdays. Never spot, stop spending time with me in reading my word and spending time with me at all times, in every circumstance, good, bad, ugly, on vacation, everywhere you go, at your job, you got to pray. And if you pray, I'll meet you right there with everything that you need. And I got some peace for you if you just pray. I love you. And I hate to see you all stressed out and worried and angry and upset, overwhelmed. I just hate seeing that. So I'm just telling you, you're a follower. I died on the cross, rose from the dead and cleared the way so you could be forgiven and come in my presence every day and receive everything I have for you. It's just how to pray. How many are receiving that from the Lord today? Let's all stand up. Ooh, praise the Lord. I know, I thought I was going to go through Luke chapter 18, verse 1 through 8. We went through Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Are we okay taking our time on this, though? I mean, I'm going to want to get this settled. I'm not here to speed preach. I want you to understand it. And I, I get this point. We do not learn to be informed. We learn to apply. Okay, you guys got that? We don't learn to be informed. We learn to apply. Well, I got information. Who cares? If you don't apply it, it won't work for you. Okay? So this is what I'm asking you to do. Start where you're at. Start where you're at. Write down five things that you're believing for. It's your wish list. Your prayer list. Keep it in front of you. Write five things that you're grateful for. Make that list grow. Become a grateful person. You'll be a joy-filled person and a peaceful person. It's going to be okay. Right? Let's start with that. And then deliberately spend time communicating with God with, as you're coming to church on a weekly basis. That's one way. And also daily spending some time with God. And I would recommend no less than a half hour window to spend time with God. And I, what do you do with that? Read the Bible, a chapter of the Bible. Go through your prayer list. Take notes of what you've learned through the Bible reading. That's it. Do that every day. And I guarantee you're going to be a greater leader, a greater father. You're going to start getting healed. You're going to start growing. You're going to be more stable, concrete, solid. And then people will begin to follow you because they're going to want what you have. Say, where'd you get that piece from? A half hour a day will keep the devil away. Right? Right? Do it. If you could give God some secret time by yourself, he'll meet you there. I promise you. He'll give you a download of the next chapter of your life. He'll give you some vision. He'll give you some wisdom. And he'll build you with reassurance. And he's going to give you a picture of how it's going to turn out. You're going to say, oh, that's how it's going to turn out. He goes, yeah, don't worry about this. You're just walking through this. This is not the end. This is just a process. I'm taking you somewhere. Wouldn't it be great to get some downloads about the future, what's coming? How are you going to get if you don't spend time with him? That means you might have to turn off your YouTube, Instagram, I don't know, TikTok nonsense. I wonder how many people are just Facebooking 
God out of their whole life. And then they're wondering, why am I seeing God move? I go, well, your God is Facebook. Okay, that's enough. I'm going to get off my soapbox right now. I'm ready to go into dangerous waters. I tell you, I love you guys though, right? Could we come next week? Can we make it two weeks in a row? And then three weeks in a row? Someone say consistence. Persistence. You're not persistent if you're not consistent. You're not persistent if you're not consistent. Being consistent is being persistent. Sometimes you got to knock and knock and knock and knock. And say, when are you going to stop knocking? I won't stop knocking until I get my breakthrough. I won't stop showing until I, I get a breakthrough. I will be consistent with God more than I'm consistent with my job. See, when you guys have a perfect attendance at your job and super spotty attendance in your worship. And God says, why don't we make this perfect attendance? You keep your perfect attendance there and watch both of them work to blow your mind what I'm ready to do. I'm going to reach your kids through your consistency in the spirit. I'm going to reach your marriage. I'm going to reach your mind. I'm going to set you free. Come on. How many wants to come on God's results? Let's get consistent and persistent. This Wednesday, part two. This Wednesday, part part two, okay? Now, we're going to leave in a second. I'm going to dismiss in just a second. No one leave until I dismiss. Let's have some order because God's ready to move right now. But right now, if you're going through something like, man, it's overwhelming. This is a house of prayer. And the Bible said, wherever two agree on earth, it shall be done. We're going to take the permission that God has given us, the authority that God has given us. And we're going to agree with you for a breakthrough and a miracle in your life right now. If there's something that you're desperate about, I need a breakthrough right now. Leave your seat. Come up here right now. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for a miracle. Now, only the desperate that really want a breakthrough are going to make it up here. And they're the ones that are going to get the results. And when you come up here, don't, don't come up with a prayer. Uh, just bless me. I won't do it. You got to know what you want from God. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, someone's desperate here. They're saying, I, you don't know what they're going through. Some, someone might be suicidal coming up here. Someone's heartbroken. Someone's in a cycle they can't break. But Jesus is going to set them free today. Today's going to be their day of their breakthrough. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, someone is coming forward. And meet it up with Jesus. It's going to change their family. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. All right. One more prayer. Proud of you guys. Come on. Whole family is here. How many know Jesus is the answer? This, this, this next Wednesday, this next Sunday, you don't want to miss. Also, write down five names. Let's get some people here next week. Come, come and then bring somebody. At least one, some, one person. All right. All right, now. One more prayer. I'm just going to break it down real simple. I'm going to give you a fact. One day, you're going to die. And... Say, Pastor, why, we, why do we want to talk about death? Because a wise person, the Bible says, a wise person thinks a lot about it. Why does he think a lot about it? Because it's going to happen for sure. And the reality is, if you die today, which could happen, where would you spend eternity? Do you know, maybe you don't know this, that after death is judgment, the Bible says to every man is appointed a day to die. And after that, judgment. And that means you're going to be standing before Jesus Christ, the one that died for you. And when you stand before Jesus Christ, he's going to go over your life and your decision that you've made. He's going to go over the opportunities that you had to receive him as your Lord and Savior. The reality is every single one of us has sinned. There's nobody here better than no one. And if you're thinking, what am I going to say to Jesus? And I'm going to ask you, what would you say to Jesus? And you're standing before him. That's going to be an actual day. 
there's going to be a moment that you're literally standing before Jesus, looking him in the eye. You're going to be there being judged. And this moment is going to be brought up. What are you going to tell him? Why should he let you into heaven? Are you going to tell him that you're a pretty good person? Well, God, you know, based on, based on my neighbors, I was a better person than them. The Bible says this is a fact that the wage of sin or the price or the judgment for sin, one sin, is death. And you know what death means? Eternal separation from God forever and ever and ever in hell. What is death? Separation from God and all his blessings and prayer forever and ever in hell. I got good news for you. Jesus died for you and I. You don't get into heaven because you're good enough. You get into heaven because he paid the price for our fines. We deserve death. We deserve punishment. We deserve judgment. And God says, I love them so much. I'll send my innocent, sinless son, righteous son to die for the ungodly, the unrighteous. He'll die for them. And all they'll have to do is believe in the sacrifice I provided for them. And and accept Jesus, believe and accept them. He'll forgive them, they can repent of their sins. I'm done living my way. Receive Jesus, he'll give you eternal life. Eternal life is a gift, it's not a reward. But there has to be a time in your life where you say, Jesus, I'm done doing life my way. I'm, I repent of my sins. I'm tired of my sin life. I'm tired of doing it my way. Save me, make me a new person. Give me the free gift of eternal life. So I'm going to end it with this. If you're here in this room, and if today were your last day on earth, and you're not sure where you'd go, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven or hell, I don't know. Today's your day to receive Jesus, your Lord and Savior. He's knocking your heart, so will you open your heart? When I count to three, you're saying, Pastor, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want forgiveness of my sins. I want to start over. I need a new life. I need a new beginning. I, and God is saying, please, I love you. I sent my son. Let's do it now. Tomorrow might be too late. Today's your day. One, when I say three, I want you to raise your hands and give your life to Jesus. Two, Jesus already raised his hands for you. Will you agree with him? He's choosing you. Will you choose him? Receive forgiveness. Return, receive eternal life. When I say three, I want you to raise your hands all over this building and enter into your new life. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building if you want to receive Christ. Right there. One, two, three, four, five. Proud of you. Six. Proud of you. Seven, baby. That's awesome. Eight over here. Nine over here. Ten over here. Eleven over here. Twelve over here. Come on. We got twelve new disciples just like Jesus. Those that raise their hands. I want you to come up here real quick. Come up to the front. This is your first step in following Jesus. Everyone online, if you want to give your life to Jesus, just raise your hands in your car, in your living room. This is your time. We're going to pray in just a second. Come on, church. Let's give a hand. Someone's giving their life to Jesus. Someone's been praying for them. All right. They're still coming. We're going to do last prayer. Come on, they're still coming from the back all the way to the front. Come on, they're still coming. Thank God for a church. Come on, that's preaching the gospel. And people are getting saved. A place that people can connect with Jesus. Come on, church, they're still coming. The altars are full. Come on, celebrate this. This doesn't happen everywhere. Come on, we're going to need some leaders up here. I'm going to need another 30, 40 leaders. Come on, the altars are packed. We might have 200 people up here giving their lives to Jesus. Love you. Love you guys. Love you. Love you. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to overcome. It's a new beginning today. Let's do it. Come on. You're going to make it. God's with you. You're not alone. All right. All right, we're going to pray right now. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to talk to God. 
He's going to help us. Okay? He's going to help us. Many of you are giving your life to Jesus today. And he's, he's so proud of you. Because you didn't have to say yes. You could have said no. Not now. See you later. But you said yes. This is your first step of following Jesus. All I'm saying is, let's follow him for real. Let's follow him for real. You're making a disciple to be a, a decision to be a disciple of Jesus. That means he's going to mentor you. He's going to teach you. He's going to fill you with his spirit. You're not going to know about God. God's going to live in you through his spirit. He's going to make you a new person with new desires and new strength. New desires and new strength. That's what God does. He's going to give you purpose. He's going to heal your mind, your body, your family. Your He's going to restore you. It's going to be okay. God, just follow me. Who's messed up? Every one of us. You're no longer going to live in a guilt trip. You're going to focus on your future, not your past. Are you ready? Let's bow our heads, close your eyes, and prayer is talking to God. I'm going to help you with that right now. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for telling me I ought to pray. I need you in my life. Save me. Forgive me for doing life my way on my own terms. I'm sorry, Lord. I need your help. I've messed it up. And I need you to fix it. Fix me. Transform me. I give you my problems. I give you my life. I give you my body. I give you my mind. I give you my family. Thank you, Lord. I believe that I'm a sinner and deserve death. But you died in my place so that I can be forgiven and be set free from all judgment. I receive you, Jesus. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And from this day forward, I will follow you for the rest of my life. I receive the free gift of eternal life. I am born again. I am saved. And you're with me and in me. I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. I don't want no one to leave here until we pray with you. Get your information. God bless you, church. You guys are awesome. This Wednesday, if you can make it, we're doing church outside in the parking lot. It is amazing. We have some food trucks here. It's a really celebration service. Love you guys. Have a wonderful Sunday. Remember this, if God's for you, there's no one that can come against you. You can do it. Love you guys so much. Keep going forward and let's keep reaching.